All right, so you're hearing all this hype about how to build AI agents. Well, I'm gonna show you today how to build an AI agent using C Sharp, using the Semantic Kernel and Google's Gemma 3, running locally through Olama. No cloud fees, no API keys, just pure development freedom here. So got the exact code, it's all for free. I'm gonna give it to you right here. We're gonna walk it through step by step and talk about how you can build this and get started with your company and your projects. Let's dive in. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer Thomason. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, as well as build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so let's dive in and get to some code because I know that's what you're all saying is, Spencer, shut up and stop talking and let's get to some code here. So let me get switched over here and we will get going on some code. Hold down this code base here. And so you, I'm gonna go show you where you can get this. So these, this link is down in the down in the description down below. So make sure you grab this because this is where you can go and get it. We come with all this, uh, all the instructions here. The great thing is, this is all totally free. You can see this code uh, sample number two hundred forty four. We give these away for free because we love training software developers here at Startup Pack. So make sure that you pull this down very first because this is going to be the important part for uh, you know for getting rolling here. So once you've got this pulled down, this is the code you've got, and you've also got a great README here to run you through and how to you know pull these and, and make these changes to get started uh, for this. Now, you can see that you create the first kernel and you do the create builder, right? We add the scope and the scope that we're gonna add here is the API client, right? So this is where we're uh, sending it to Olama, right? So if you've changed your Olama port, which you kind of would have to know what you're doing, by default, this is what the Olama port is. And then we're gonna give it the o Olama chat completion service, right? So this Olama chat completion service is, uh, is set up here, right? So you've got the constructor, where we pass in the client. Um, in this client, uh, we then also are specifying our default model here, right? And this default model then is where, so if you wanna change from Olama, or let's say that your machine has more hardware than this machine has, which I would definitely recommend getting a little bit more of a, a better machine, get to at least the four billion or you know even higher uh, parameters. As high a parameters, the more accuracy you're gonna get on this model here, right? But this is where, this one's gonna be a chat uh, stream. And so this is where it will create the format of the model. You can see we run through and we set the prompt execution settings. We set the kernel cancellation token. And then we're building our string builder here, right? For this is for capturing the stream. We pass in the chat history. So this is how we are actually using this chat, uh, retaining this chat history between chats, right? So that's an important piece that I'm gonna show you here because then this, this actually uses this as it's passing through to get this. So let me show you this running here and we can uh, take a look at some of these and uh, let me set some breakpoints here. So we can take a look at these as we run this because that's, that's what real developers do, right? Is run and, and break points and take a look at this. So let's say, why is the sky blue? Okay. When it comes back, you can see that our chat history right now is blank because we haven't really done anything here, right? So we can see that we don't have a whole lot in here in our chat history. Now, if I run this and I let this guy fly, you can see it comes back and the bot waits for a second and it's calling and then it comes back with us. Now, once it comes back with us, it's gonna start to store it into the chat history and you can set, see that this is getting set into the chat history um, as we see this response coming back, right? So we're, we're keeping the chat history here as we create this chat history. So this is some of our built-in classes that make this um, uh, really, um, really slick from uh, some of these classes that we get from Microsoft using this. And so this is this is really, Microsoft's done a lot of the heavy lifting for us here. So now if I say, what was my previous question? And we run this guy here. Now our chat history has, and, and I'm not really able to see, but you can see now our chat history has a count of four, right? So we've seen this, this has definitely gone up. So let's let this go again. And it says, hey, your previous one was, why was the sky blue, right? So this is pretty slick that the fact that it can actually start to remember between these. Now, even better yet, if I stop this and then I run it again, oh, I saw my breakpoint in there. 
Uh, so it looks like it doesn't stop if you are lo if you stop the program you are going to lose this so you will want to try to figure out how to retain this so this becomes an important thing that if you want to be able to retain this model all, uh, retain your chat history all you have to do is save this out to some kind of data store now the data store that i've been really liking to use lately is postgresql using json you can take this serialize it out and that way you could always be capturing this and feeding it back into the model every single time so that way if it stops because see if we run this again now so now i say what was my previous question it's now going to probably know it because it knows my previous question was what was my previous question right um, and so, uh, I understand. I think it's gotten confused now. Why is the sky blue? So we're going to let that fly. And once this comes back, then we can then start to build on top of that. Okay. Now explain like I am five years old. So see now it simplifies it, right? So it, you know, big box of crayons, it sends all the colors, the rainbow, et cetera, et cetera, right? So you can see that it retained that it knew what my previous question was because it could re relay this back. So it not only knows the, the input, but it knows the output. Now the beauty to that is you can actually then save this and save it off to another data store so that it could retain it between uh, chat uses. So you can definitely see how powerful this is because the AI models are the most powerful when we can work in the size of the context window. That's one of the biggest pieces to it. So where this code is really, really, really simple and probably overly, overly simplified, at the end of the day, it's this is all the code. So we've got 45 uh, lines in here and another, uh, you know, 140. 20 or so here, so under 200 lines of code, and you've got a full working AI agent that you can start to work with and take these um, and start to store this context between uh, between uses. So this becomes really powerful as you want to be able to interact with data and be able to chain data uses together, right? Because this becomes really, really powerful with that. So. Uh, this is a great example. Hopefully this gives you some help. Um, again, as always, if you need any other help, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers in our licensed coding boot camps, but we also love to build custom software solutions for companies. So if your company is struggling or you want to get into building some AI agents for your company, reach out to us. You can hit us up at startuppack.com slash Spencer. If you're interested in the coding boot camps, we've got some great coding boot camps and great opportunities for people who want to continue to learn some of this awesome new technology. So check this information out. Want to become a software developer but don't want to spend four years in college and rack up massive student loan debts? Think you need technical expertise to get started? Welcome to Startup Pack, a better way to start your software career without student loans and years without income. One-on-one -on -one tutoring is included so you never get stuck and have guidance through the whole process. No technical experience is necessary. Learn at your own pace and in your own space. Startup Pack has worked with local state agencies in your area to make it so that qualifying students can get the program costs covered entirely and students can start earning while they learn. StartupHacks.net Coding Bootcamp was a game changer for my career. As someone with no prior programming experience, I was initially intimidated by the idea of learning to code. But the instructors at Startup Hack broke down complex concepts into easy to understand lessons and provided hands-on projects that really cemented my understanding. The curriculum was comprehensive and up-to-date and got me ready for my first job. What really set Startup Hack apart was to focus on practical, real-world skills. Thanks to Startup Hack, I landed my dream job as a .NET developer within weeks of graduating. I went from knowing nothing about code to building professional grade web applications in just a few intense months. If you're looking to break into .NET development or level up your coding skills, I cannot recommend Startup Hack enough. Complete our three month coding bootcamp, gain hands on experience, and land a paid internship. With two years of experience, on average, our graduates are making over $80,000 per year. The three month program includes technologies from Microsoft, Google, and Facebook. No debt, just a quick path to earning. Check out startuphack.com to code your future and start today.